Are you an LVN and trying to figure out what is the best way to get a grip of working at a nursing home? Welcome! In this video series, we are going to go over some strategies to help you understand and able to complete your shift as an LVN at a nursing home or SNF. And in this video, we are going to talk about 10 things that I do to plan my run as a charge nurse on any shift. Now, if you are new here, I'm an LVN myself since 2013, and I love to share my knowledge with other LVNs trying to elevate each other. There are a lot more nursing related content coming your way, so be sure to subscribe to this channel. Now, as I said before, prioritization is a special skill that every nurse must have when working at any facility. You will have to strategize your run, and to keep it simple, you want to plan out who you are going to see first, and then the next patient after that, and then the next patient after that. It is almost impossible to do your run solely based on the order of patients' rooms. Diagnosis dictate the priority of the patients. For example, patients that have respiratory issue might require immediate attention. I'm gonna share with you right now my personal strategy or what we do here to plan out our run. The best thing to do is to show up at least 30 minutes early. Now this is really depends on your facility policy if it allows you. Or you can also ask this if it's okay with your DON or director of nursing. Please check with them first to find out if you are okay to arrive early and if you are allowed to clock in to prepare yourself. Do not check with your fellow nurses if you are to do this to avoid any issue. Please check only with your director of nursing. This is my method of preparing my run. First things first, wash your hands as soon as you arrive at the facility. Get a copy of today's census. A census is a list that contains the names of patients with their room numbers. This is usually available at the nurse's station. If the nurse from previous shift is available to communicate with you, meaning if they are done with their medication run and if they are currently sitting at the nurse's station, you can only ask them if it's okay for you to request some assistance in preparing your run. Then I would begin jotting down these key components on the census paper. Number one is to ask for the list of diabetic patients. This is important because depending on your shift, you will have a special schedule to check their blood sugar. For example, if you are working morning shift, usually at 11.30 a.m. or before lunch, you will need to check your patient's blood sugars. PM shift usually checks their blood sugars at 4.30 p.m. before dinner and at bedtime around 9 p.m. And if you are working knock shift, you get to check their blood sugar at 6.30 a.m. or before breakfast. Knowing which ones are diabetics is also going to help you strategize how to react when there is a change of conditions with the patients. Like let's say when somebody is being lethargic, you'll know checking the blood sugar is the priority. Number two is to ask for the list of ESRD patients. End-stage renal disease patients get dialyzed throughout the week, could be around three times a week, and usually they have a set schedule. Make sure you know their schedule. If it falls on the day that you are working for them, make sure to strategize your run so that they may get their medications and sack lunch before they get transported to their dialysis. It is also important to let your CNAs know that they must get the patients ready before they are scheduled to be picked up by transportation. Now, before these patients get picked up, the most important thing is for you to prepare their dialysis communication binder. The binder will go with the patient to their dialysis center. And then the nurses and the doctors over there will use the communication binder to share information with you about the patients, like the pre-dialysis weight and the post-dialysis weight. Check the patient's vital signs. Also check their dialysis side for brutes and thrills. Please include current list of medications and information about any change of condition that the patient currently is having. Number three, ask for the patients that currently are on antibiotics. Antibiotics are often overlooked by healthcare staff as just another medication. In reality though, antibiotics are very important to get your patients out of their current infection. Missing a dose, overdosing, or just simply not adhering to the antibiotic schedule will affect the patient tremendously. Make sure you know who the patients are and the time to administer them. Number four is to ask for patients that currently have a set schedule for routine pain or anxiety medications. Trust me, your shift will be a lot smoother when you know this information. A patient that require a routine pain medication usually have very poor pain tolerance and tolerating you in being late 
might not be in their dictionary. Getting this down will help you having a smoother run. Number five, speaking about pain and anxiety medications, there are also patients that only have the medications as, as needed or PRN. Sometimes you will encounter these kind of patients, the patients that will somehow ask for it continuously, but for some reason the doctor doesn't want to prescribe them as routine. Now in this case, just ask about the patients that keep asking for pain and anxiety medications and then find out when you can give them the next dose. This can be done from going over with the previous shift nurse what time did they administer their medication last. Number six is to go over patients that have routine breathing treatments. These are very important. Remember, respiratory is one of the top priorities. Number seven, ask for the list of G2 patients and go over when they need to be turned off or when you need to replace the formula. Number eight, go over the current change of condition for your patients. Usually, there's a change of condition book that is located at the nurse's station and you need to go over them to understand the challenges that your patients are currently having. Number nine, find out if any of your patients is scheduled to go to appointments or being discharged that day. Same principles with dialysis patients. If they are scheduled for appointments or being discharged, please check with your RN or DON what are the paperwork that you must prepare for the patients. Also, don't forget to tell your CNAs to get them ready in time. Number 10, and the most important thing of all, is to get a report of each patient from your previous shift nurse by visiting each patient in their room. This is where you get to extract most information as how their day was going and if there was any problem that arose during previous shift. And it's also a perfect time for you to introduce yourself to each patient. Look, I know this is a lot, and for the first couple of weeks or months, you may find yourself overwhelmed with all of this information and what seemed to be a really impossible work. Trust me, every LVN experienced and went through this and then most of us survived. So just keep pushing on, have faith in yourself, talk less, more action, focus on your patience, and you will do great things. In the next video, I'm going to talk more about how to start your shift. Now feel free to replay this video or take a break before diving in into the next one. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you on the next one.